Let's learn the basics of GitHub Actions by creating your first workflow, exploring the different components of a workflow definition file, and using a community-built GitHub Actions template. GitHub Actions is a platform that you can use to automate stuff, with the idea being that you would automate things like running unit tests, app deployments, sending notifications, etc., stuff like that. And realistically, it's flexible enough that you can really kind of let your imagination run wild. So you can chain different commands together and pass the outputs from one command into the next one and create these really elaborate workflows on deploying your code or running tests or deploying your code into, into very complex environments. Um, so today we're going to look at how you can kind of get started within the actions work actions ecosystem by creating your very first workflow. So I have an empty repository on screen that I literally just created. Nothing else has been done here. And what we're going to do is create a workflow inside of this repository. So I'm going to go ahead and select the actions tab up top. And then we're presented with some templates that we can use to do various things like deployments, continuous integration, automation, et cetera, et cetera. We are going to select simple workflow, which is going to give us a workflow that ha kind of has the minimum required minimum requirements in order to do something with it. So I'm going to click configure here. And what you'll notice is this gives us a markdown editor that we can work with inside of GitHub. Um, the file itself is saved in a folder called .github forward slash workflows, which is where all of your workflows live. And since this is simply just a file, you could use your standard development environments like VS Code or any other tooling that you use in order to create files. As long as you know how to create the markdown files and, and know how to put them together, you don't even necessarily need to do this directly within GitHub. So I'm going to change the name of this to my first workflow. .yaml, okay? So and you can see each of these steps in here has a lot of commentary going on. And this is kind of just is going to walk you through what exactly each one of these steps do. But that's that's what we're going to do here. So don't worry if you worry about reading those. So the first item here on line three is name. And this is what's going to show inside of the actions tab in order to like kind of describe the workflow itself and to give it some context. Otherwise, it just uses the name of the file if you don't have a specified. This here is completely optional. So even if you omit this when you're creating your actions, it's no big deal. It will just use the file name to, to show you which of these workflows is running. The second section here from lines five through 11 are on. The on node are triggers in which this action should run. So by default inside of here, um, this template that we used has two triggers, uh, a push trigger and a pull request trigger. So this means that at any time a, a push of new commits occurs to our GitHub repository, this trigger, this workflow is going to run. Anytime any pull request events trigger, this is going to run. And now you can see these are further filtered by the branch of main. So this will actually only happen under the context of the main branch. These again are optional. However, if you omit this and delete it like this, every single time you push code to your your repository, regardless of whether it is to the main branch or any other branch in the repository, this will run. Now you have a finite number of minutes that you get allotted to you for free through GitHub. So you definitely don't want to run these all the time unless you're just kind of experimenting with the platform and playing around with it and figuring out what's going on. So I'm going to put that back. Okay. And then the next one here actually it goes all the way to 14. I didn't even realize this on section went all the way to 14 is workflow dispatch. And what this will do, what the workflow dispatch trigger does is gives you a button within the GitHub action section of your repository that you can click to manually execute the workflow. This is really handy if you want to be able to, to chain a bunch of commands and do automations, but you really only want it to run when you want it to run. Okay. Moving on from there, we have jobs and jobs in the context of GitHub actions is something the action is doing a job can be run jobs can be run in parallel or sequentially depending on how it's configured but every github action has to have at least one job with some steps inside of it the name of this job is actually called build and this is this is a this build here is actually an arbitrary name. I can name this to anything I want. So if I say build underscore my underscore code, that's still technically valid. And that is the name of this job. I'm going to change this back to build just so we're running the default. And then moving on from there, we also have runs on runs on lets you specify the machine that the this code will run on. And a good example of why this is important 
is because under some circumstances with uh, Mac and iOS development being the most obvious one, that code technically can only be compiled on a Mac operating system. So if you're trying to build something, you want the option to be able to swap out your runners, uh, the runner's operating system. The runner is actually the, the term for whatever container or machine behind the scenes is running and executing all this stuff. Um, you wanna be able to swap that out with whatever environment you your code should be running under. And then finally, in this default template, we have steps for the job. And steps are exactly what you would expect them to be. They are different steps of the job that will execute in this specific order in order to do something. So breaking this steps, these steps down even further, the first one here is just, it's an unnamed step called uses. What uses does in the context of a GitHub action step is pulls in a repository that has a template of a specific action to be run. And we're gonna get into this a little bit later. But essentially this checkout action is standard for almost all GitHub workflows because this checkout step pulls in the code from your repository in order that it can be built or run or do something with. Most circumstances, most GitHub action workflows are gonna use the code within the repository. So this next step that's been defined here is actually does not use a GitHub action, a predefined action per se, but it just simply runs a bash script. In this case, it's just gonna echo hello world. And then finally, you can also run multi-line commands by adding a pipe next to this run here. So the name of our name of these steps are run a one-line script or run a multi-line script with the, the syntax to match. Now I'm gonna delete all of this, uh, all these comments here because this looks a little bit spread out and chaotic in my opinion when you just bring in the defaults here. So when I remove a lot of this extra, this extra verbosity, I guess, the extra comments, it actually looks a lot cleaner. So this technically here, as you can see, 20 lines is the standard GitHub action template that is used to start off many projects. Now you'll notice when I click commit changes, I can uh, I can click commit here now too. And what's gonna happen is since this is technically a push into the repository, if we head up to the actions tab, we can actually see that this workflow is attempted to be run. Now, for some reason, the first time you do this within the UI, it runs it twice. I'm not entirely certain why. And if you actually know, if you're watching this video and you know, do me a favor, tell me in the comments because I'd love to understand why it runs this twice. So now I'm gonna open the latest version of this is create my first workflow. That's the name of the commit that was used to trigger this workflow. Here is our build job that was named that we pointed out earlier. And here are all of our steps. So you can see we have the setup job. Here's the first uh, step that we ran, run actions forward slash checkout. And we can click on this to expand the job step itself and see all of the output within it. Now, if I go down to run a one line script, we can see it was the thing that was run was echo hello world, which spits out hello world into the output. And again, the multi-line script runs just two commands, add other actions to the build and test and deploy your project, both of which are just bash commands to echo those statements out. Now let's make some changes to the, to the repository itself and see how those triggers work. So if I had to code and I just say something like add a readme and we could just say, uh, this will trigger my or the workflow and I commit these changes. Since this technically acts as a push, that actually will trigger the workflow to run. If I go back into actions and I'll refresh this page, we can see create readme was the commit message that triggered this one, this, this workflow to run on the main branch. And this is useful in under circumstances where every time you push to a specific branch, you want something like continuous, you want something like unit tests to run on a code and then report back to you in case something is wrong. Now, if you recall earlier, I had also mentioned the workflow dispatch trigger lets you manually run these workflows without having to make any changes to the code. If I select the CI workflow on the left-hand side, remember the name of our workflow was CI, I get this button here that says run workflow. And if I select run workflow and then again, click the green button that says run workflow, this is a manually executed event. So I can refresh the page and see that this, not, instead of having the name of a commit, it just has the name of the workflow itself, which in this case is CI and it's running on the main branch because we had specified that under work, run workflow right here. Now, if you recall earlier, I had mentioned that there is a, there are these public actions that can be utilized within your workflows. If I head back to the file, this is my first workflow. Let's actually go back into the code tab, navigate into the workflows directory and select my first workflow and edit it. 
On the right hand side, you'll see this marketplace here. This marketplace actually is, has a bunch of different uh, template commands that you can use to run of which this actions forward slash checkout is. So now if I scroll through this, you can see there's a bunch here, but let's say I want to do something about like how to build a Go app. I do a lot of stuff with Go, so I like working with that language. If I just type in Go, and hit enter you can see there's a bunch of commands here so go dependency submission set up go environment and it shows the author underneath of which so this one says this is by it, uh, the author actions and that's the name of either the that's the name of the repository owner that is used in this reference here actions is the official github actions organization that they use to publish theirs but anyone can pretty much build an action and publish it out to the internet for instance this x hyphen actions is a completely different organization that has published github actions for others to use or there is this packager dot packager io which has the go publisher GitHub action that can be used within our workflow. So in order to see how one of these work, I actually have a, another little bit of a demo set up. Let's go ahead and pull in SATAK forward slash web request. This one right here, this web request action. All this does is simply allow you to send a web request to something. Now, if I click on this, you can see there is a bit of a template here that you can use within your action in order to make it work. So there's no way to really click on a button and have it add in here. You gotta copy this and paste it in. So I'm gonna copy that using the button there and I'm gonna paste this in and fix the formatting. Okay, so I'm gonna actually get rid of a lot of this, this comment, this, these comments here, just to show what a lot of this is. So the name of our step here is web request action and the uses here is the SATAC forward slash web request action and this is pulled in from this specific repository now this here from lines 23 on is different than what we've seen so far in our demonstration what this lets us do the width is almost like parameters that are being passed into the action so when authors create actions and publish them they can tell the action I need to have a parameter with the name of URL. I need to have a parameter with the name of method. Okay, so all of these, they some many of them are optional and the best place to check is actually the readme of the repository itself that hosts it, of which you can get to it by full view full marketplace listing. Um, but in this specific circumstance, we know we wanna specify a URL. So I'm gonna get rid of all this and we're gonna get rid of that comment there as well. And the URL we're going to execute against is just a simple joke, Chuck Norris jokes API, just to see some kind of output in the log. So I'll say HTTPS coin slash slash API dot Chuck Norris. Die IO forward slash jokes forward slash random. And then the method here, which is one of the other parameters the the you can see on the right hand side method as a parameter, we're going to specify Git like that. Now, if I commit these changes and click commit changes, and head back over to our actions. We're gonna refresh this page and you can see update my first workflow is actually a trigger for that specific action. So if I click on that and go to the build job, here's all of our steps here. Web request action was that new step we had added based off of a community action template. And if I drop this down, we can see here is a Chuck Norris joke that was returned by this, dem by this test API that, uh, that we had executed against. Now, one final thing I wanted to show is what these action repositories look like. So I'm actually going to head back into the action itself or the workflow itself. And let's edit this again, because I simply want the marketplace listing on the right hand side. We're not going to edit any of this. So if I say SATAK, which was the author of that action, and I select the action again, let's click on view full marketplace listing and see what this looks like. So this is the listing in the marketplace and we can see under usage, it shows this is essentially the contents of the readme, everything down here. So here's an example, get request. Here's an example, post request with all the inputs and what's what your expected output can look like. And then the right hand side under links, you can see there is a link to the actual repository that hosts all of the code that's run. And that's very important is all of these actions are all open source. They have to be on GitHub's platform because workflows need to be able to pull them in to test them out. So if you want wanted to go through and see what code is actually being executed behind the scenes, you totally can just by looking at the repository that hosts the code for this specific action. 
Hopefully this video helped you gain a better understanding on how to create GitHub Actions. If you've ever worked with GitHub Actions before, or you have any creative ideas on how you can potentially use Actions within your own development ecosystem, do me a favor and let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see an example of how to use GitHub Actions in a realistic world or real world environment, take a look at my video on how to publish images into how to publish Docker images into GitHub Container Registry using GitHub Actions. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.